This is episode 39. My name is Mandy, and today we are speaking with Jennifer McDonald from CoPower. As relationship manager at both CoPower and VCIB, Jennifer implements growth and engagement strategies while supporting CoPower green bond holders. Her previous experience includes four years as an associate on the institutional investment management team at Phillips, Hager, and North, where she helped manage and monitor institutional client accounts ranging from pension plans to foundations and endowments across Canada. Jennifer started her career at BMO Capital Markets, where she gained exposure to energy and power infrastructure assets. She was the lead energy analyst for Project Vision, an economic development program for Togo. She holds an MBA from the University of Cambridge, where she studied under the Energy and Environment Concentration. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you very much, Mandy. We have five questions for you. What climate problem keeps you up at night? To be honest, Mandy, I'm not kept up at night worrying about our climate and about our environment in the future. I've continually been inspired by the work I see around me, done at CoPower and a lot of other organizations, uh, and as well as the good news coming out in the world with new pledges towards climate. You know, we've seen Biden, um, who pledged that he wants to spend up to two trillion over the next four years to drive down emissions. And so I think that we're really seeing the tide turned uh, and never underestimate, never bet against human ingenuity. So I think that we're on a good upswing for, for climate focus. So uh, not being kept up at the night. However, um, that being said, you know, with CoPower, what we're trying to solve for is financing for clean energy projects. So we know that in order to avoid um, catastrophic climate change. We need about an annual 2.4 trillion to be invested globally in clean energy projects. And so that includes, you know, projects that are either producing renewable energy or energy efficiency projects. Uh, and so by the end of uh, year 2050, all sectors of our economy um, have to be close to uh, achieving decarbonization. And again, coming from you know, pledges out of the US, you know, that, that kind of matches that time scale. So the need to redirect capital from the fossil fuel industry to clean energy on a massive scale is urgent and, and leadership is needed, not only from major financial institutions and government, but also from individuals making their decisions about how to invest their savings, their pensions, you know, their, their long-term earnings, um, and making sure that there's places where they can do that. So making sure that there are impact investments available to them and, and easily accessible so that they can access you know, these types of, of impact investments. What is the solution? Yeah, so, so for the solution, um, you know, we do have a lot of technology that's readily available right now. We have reliable solar wind, geo-exchange, geothermal, and LED technologies that can help reduce carbon pollution, generate clean power, and, and save energy, and that they are readily available. So widespread deployment of these projects is crucial to addressing that 40% of global emissions to come from our built environment. But financing remains a challenge. And so what we've been focused on at CoPower is really financing those small scale energy projects. So the projects that are less than 20 million in size, but because they're smaller, they can't access the same financing that a larger project would. So they can't go into a bank or they can't go to a large life insurance or a pension plan. Again, because it's too small, it's not worth it for them to do the due diligence. Um, a couple of years ago, we financed a, a $6.5 million geothermal project in BC, and it was made, uh, it was geothermal on an individual house basis for over 600 new houses, new, new houses, uh, sorry, new builds um, that would get geothermal instead of the traditional heating and cooling system like a natural gas furnace. And when we were talking to that, that project developer, they said, you know, we were talking to a large one of the large insurance companies in Canada, and they said, come back when you're 50 million. So the technology is there, it, it's strong economics, but the way that our large financial institutions are set up, they're not set up to support these smaller projects. And these can get quickly off the ground and they can add um, significantly, uh, help speed up Canada's plan to have a lower carbon future. And so again, CoPower's role uh, in financing it is working with these private developers, you know, helping them to get to their bigger projects. And once they reach that, you know, then, then they have more access to financing. But until they get up off the ground, there's limited vehicles for them to do it. 
And so being able, creating, um, you know, a new innovative way to help these lenders, that's really been at the, the forefront of, uh, of our mission so far. What's in the way? Uh, so one of the things that I just mentioned is that traditional financing sources aren't accessible to the smaller the smaller project developers who are who are building um, more decentralized solutions. The other kind of barrier that you can think about is, you know, the other mission of CoPower was democratizing clean energy investment. So traditionally, large um, clean energy projects were only available to large pension plans or accredited investors, you know, investors that can write checks upwards of, you know, a million dollars. And so our mission was, you know, funding these small scale projects and making them accessible to retail investors. And so, you know, we started with minimums of 5,000 and now 10,000 that individuals, you know, can invest in green bonds, put it in your portfolio, put it in your RSP, save it for later. But, you know, you it's something that you feel good about, you know, you earn a fixed return and it's something that matches or aligns with your own values, your own, you know, your own personal um, goals. And so, you know, one of the things that, you know, we've worked with at CoPower is, you know, for the majority of Canadians have, you know, investment accounts that are, are are there at one of the large banks or a large asset manager, you know, so you could have a pension plan through Sun Life um, or Great West or, or one of those others. And so when you're working with a bank platform or a large, in, uh, a large investing platform, you don't typically have access to impact investments on there. So you have access to stocks, you have access to mutual funds, a lot of market securities, but the market securities aren't necessarily impact. There is a growth in responsible investment choices, um, but you know investors still have to be um, have to do their due diligence to make sure that it's not necessarily greenwashing, that it is in fact green. And so, you know, one of the barriers is, you know, making sure retail investors know about their investment options and making sure that they are aware of the potential impact for, um, for their portfolio. Um, and so I'd say, you know, education is one, but also, you know, People can uh, bug their financial institution, ask what other uh, opportunities are there. And so, you know, Enviro Center, you know, does a great job of, of educating. And I, I think that, you know, there needs to be more platforms and, and more awareness for investors to be able to ask for better investments. How can people help? Uh, and so a couple of years ago at uh, CoPower, um, uh, me and my colleagues put together uh, um, an industry report that looked at what the carbon footprint is of an individual's investment portfolio. So Mandy, you and I, as living, breathing individuals, our, our carbon footprint each year is about 21 to 23 tons. So that's based on the heating and cooling of our house, what we eat, you know, where we buy it from, how local is it, uh, our cars, do we take public transportation, do we have our own car, and then how many flights do we take a year, are we traveling locally, or are we vacationing abroad, and so if you can think, you know, you yourself, a living, breathing individual has 21 tons of carbon a year, if you have an investment portfolio that's between 200 and 300,000, that investment portfolio has the same carbon in footprint as you, a living, breathing individual. And so that's just based on uh, an index of stock. So in Canada, we've got the Toronto Stock, uh, the Toronto stock uh, Exchange or the Tr Toronto Stock Index. And so it, you're looking at an index across Canada. So it's not just the energy sector. So, you know, energy makes up about 20% of our stocks. It's not just them, it's, it's you know, hotel companies and, and banks have a carbon footprint too. And so when you invest just like in a mutual fund in a mix of stocks in Canada, that those companies have a serious carbon footprint. And so, you know, 200, 250,000 might sound like a lot now, but as you're saving for your future, as you grow your RSP, there's going to be some point in time where you reach that figure. And once you go over it, you know, if you have half a million, if you have a million, then you're having a multiple so, you know, you could ha be having close to 100 tons of carbon just from your investments. Your investments are sitting there doing nothing. And so, 
you know, just by being aware that they have a carbon footprint, I think people would make different investment choices. So maybe rather than buy this mutual fund, they might look into a mutual fund that has a lower carbon footprint or is a group of companies that are actively working towards lowering their carbon footprint. And so there's investment choices that individuals can do with their money. It's like, you know, voting with your money, but it's making sure that you're aware of your portfolio so that, you know, it's sitting there and, you know, you should know what it's doing and you have the opportunity to make sure that it's aligned with, you know, your values. An individual could be very, very focused on, you know, social impact, for example. And so, you know, you could screen for that and ask your advisor or look for a mutual fund that focuses maybe on an issue like affordable housing. You know, there aren't a ton out there, but you can do a little bit of extra digging and, and do that. The other thing is private placements and, you know, co-power, we sell green bonds um, and solar share, who I think you had on a couple of weeks ago. Solar share is another really good example. It's a private placement. So it's another, it's an alternative opportunity for individuals to invest in something that they believe in, something that aligns with them, and, uh, you know, and, and it's making sure that they're putting their, their money where their heart is. What is the good future? The good future, I think the good future is already happening. I think that there's a lot of individuals that are becoming a lot more aware of their buying choices. And especially in the pandemic, you know, we've seen this big rush and this big push to buy local, which has been fantastic. People are more aware of, you know, where their food comes from, or maybe they're doing a farm share and they're getting some produce from, from a local farm. Um, and, my ask or, or my hope is that people take that next step and, and, and they do that with their portfolio as well. So, you know, are you investing in a stock that you believe in? Are you investing in an index that you believe in? Just become a little bit more aware of it and, and aware of its, its footprint. And um, I think the more aware we are of our choices, you know, we've got more choices now with transportation. Um, public transportation in Toronto is not the greatest, um, but, you know, there is a rise of uh, electronic cars and and you know we've seen VW all of all of the large car companies saying you know by 2035 I'm going to have 20 vehicles or by 2050 I'm not going to have any cars that run on fossil fuel so there's a lot of great options with transportation with where our food comes from you know where we buy our clothes um, so all of that stuff and then you know my hope is that you take it you know a little bit more holistically. Um, who are you invested with? Do you like the bank that you're invested in? Does, does the bank represent your same values? Um, and, and, you know, empowering people to, you know, to, to make a decision um, with, with their funds and with their future. Thank you for joining us today, Jennifer. Before we sign off, we have asked our guests to share one last interesting Enviro fact to ponder. Here's what Jennifer wanted you to know. Your investment portfolio may have a larger carbon footprint than you yourself do. It's a good one to think about. Thank you again for joining us, Jennifer. This was Envirocenter's Green Room.